Hello everybody, welcome to Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons PH and today we will be discussing the statement of cash flows prepared under the indirect method. Before anything else, please uh, download the handout that we need for today's discussion. The link is provided to you in the description box. So if you're ready, then let's start. So New Jeans Company is a merchandising company and provided to you in the handout are the comparative statements of financial position for 2022 and 2023 and also some of the other transactions that has transpired during the year. Just a little background about the statement of cash flows. The statement of cash flows is the only financial statement prepared under the cash basis of accounting as opposed to the actual basis of accounting in which we record revenues and expenses when they happen regardless of cash receipt or cash payment. In the statement of cash flows, we are very much concerned about the inflow of cash and the outflow of cash. And going back to your statement of cash flows prepared under the direct method, there you actually transform accrual records into cash basis records because we need to get the proceeds from the issuance of your share capital, the cash receipts from uh, receivable customers, or the cash receipts from the sale of fixed assets or long-term assets. And uh, that's why we actually call the indirect method preparation uh, of the statement of cash flows as accountant-friendly because we start actually with an accrual basis net income and we end up with the net cash flow from operating activities. So it's much more uh, friendlier, <laughs> I should say, for the accountant to prepare. But it's much more understandable actually for the general public to understand the direct method because it really directly tells you that this is the cash that we received and this is the cash that we have paid for these certain transactions. But anyway, uh, we will be focusing in this video in the preparation of your statement of cash flows under the indirect method. Okay, so please look at your handouts and let's do some preliminary analysis of your uh, financial statements of your uh, balance sheet of your statement of financial position. Okay, so your cash uh, started with 1,360,000 and ended up with 3,500,000. So that is the cash flow that we have to analyze. What are the inflows that affected that, those amounts and what are the uh, outflows that affected those amounts. What are the inflows? What are the outflows? Okay, let's start first with analyzing the increases and decreases in your working capital items, your current assets and current liabilities. Let's start with your accounts receivable. So for your accounts receivable from 1,200,000 going up by 1,450,000, that is an increase of 250,000. So I will write here 250,000 increase. I will not use the plus sign or minus sign because that might confuse you later. So I will use instead increase or decrease. Okay, and then I will be discussing you later what will what will we do if these items increase and if these items decrease. Okay. And then the next one is inventory. So for inventory, we have 1,450,000 going down to 1,330,000. That is a 120,000 decrease. Okay. Then we have prepaid expenses from 125,000 going down to 55,000. That is a 70,000 decrease okay and then machinery is a non-current asset and automobile although we need also your depreciation items later in the operate operating expenses part or basically the operating <laughs> operating part of the cash flow and then so now let's go to your accounts payable so these are your changes in current assets except cash so we have now accounts payable from okay so 1,345,000 going up to 1,445,000 that is an increase of 100,000 and your accrued expenses from 160 going down to 120 a decrease of 40,000 
Okay. And then we have borrowing and other long-term liabilities. Those are already long-term liabilities. And then your equity items of share capital and maintenance. Okay, and then uh, let's now understand the transactions that happen during the year. So cash dividends declared and distributed to shareholders is three hundred fifty thousand, and then uh, the company also purchased two additional PPE, uh, one for each class. So we can notice that uh, both machinery and automobile items actually increased. So we can analyze that later. And then the entity also issued ordinary shares for cash with no premium. So whatever increase in your ordinary share capital, those were the proceeds that the company was able to receive. And then New Jeans borrowed cash to finance their planned future expansion, which is payable in five years with no interest. Okay, so for example, purposes, uh, the borrowing has no interest, but in real life that really seldom happens. But anyway, for presentation purposes, and for discussion purposes, that should be fine for all of you and for all of us, okay? So this is our preliminary analysis and uh, we'll do some more analysis here later. Let's now start constructing your statement of cash flow starting with the header. company statement of cash flows for the year and then December 31, 2023. Let's now start with your cash flows from operating activities. In the indirect method preparation of the statement of cash flows, we actually start with the accrual basis net income. So I will write here net income okay so where is the net income and the problem you don't actually see net income there there's also no income statement that was provided to you so how can you even start your statement of cash flows without net income information <laughs> okay now if you notice, we have a beginning balance of retained earnings, we also have an ending balance of retained earnings, and we also have a dividend declaration that was given to you. So even though the net income is not directly stated in the problem, actually the problem is silent about the net income, but you can actually recompute that using your statement of retained earnings equation. Okay, so we'll be squeezing it a bit, or as uh, you know it better, <laughs> it's called working backwards right okay so we do it like this your retained earnings at the beginning of the period so it was given to you actually retained earnings started with two million okay and then we add in your unappropriated retained earnings or net income during the period which is the one that is uh, being needed in the problem so add your net income and we're looking for that and you're looking for your x okay and then we did up dividends basically dividends that were declared and distributed by the company actually going back to corporation accounting the shareholders equity once dividends are declared it's already being debited to retain earnings so you don't have to actually wait for the distribution once it's declared it's debited to retain earnings okay so the dividends declared during the time is 350,000. And that sums up your uh, statement of retained earnings and you are given your retained earnings at the end of the period, which is given to you in the problem by 3,650,000. Okay, now we're looking for the net income. So we have to go back upward. Okay, we have to squeeze this amount, or as you know it, working backwards. So, 3,650,000. And then, this is deducted, so we add it up, because we're going back. So, plus 350,000 minus your 2 million. 
Okay? So your net income during the period is also 2 million. Okay? So let me put this here, x, which is your net income. That's, that's not a mathematical function, okay? That is net income. This is accounting, not mathematics. So your net income is 2 million. This is not, again, a mathematics class. This is an accounting class. This is not a function, okay? So I will now put here your net income of 2 million. And now you get your starting point, okay? Let's add back your non-cash expenses and the most uh, the most common example of that is your depreciation okay depreciation amortization any gain that you have to deduct or any losses that you have to re-add due to for example sale of your uh, equipment you know, things like that because actually for example for gain or loss on uh, the gain or loss on sale of your fixed assets or equipment, the total proceeds actually goes to the investing activities part. So in the operating activities part, you have to uh, adjust it from your net income, actually. So if it's gain, you have to deduct it, and then if it's loss, you have to read at it. Specifically for our problem, we don't have any gain or losses. We don't also have uh, amortizations. So we only go to depreciation directly. Okay, so let's add back your depreciation. However, the depreciation expense is not directly stated in the problem, but even though it's not stated in the problem directly, you can go to the balances of the accumulated depreciation, how much it increased during that one year period. So, look at the accumulated depreciation for machinery, which is from 800,000 it went up to 910,000 so your depreciation expense as, um, as far as machinery is concerned that is 110,000 and then for your automobile from 25,000 it went up to 65,000 so 40,000 So your depreciation expense is 150000 Okay? And then now I put it here, 150000 Okay? We don't have, again, we don't have any gains and losses on sale of your long-term assets. We don't also have anything to amortize here, like a patent and anything. So, this is it. Okay? And this amount is called operating, operating income before working capital changes. Operating income before working capital changes. Okay? We add them together to a million one hundred fifty thousand. Let's now deal with your changes in your current assets and current liabilities. Okay, let's analyze them one by one. Your accounts receivable increased by 250,000, which means that because your accounts receivable increased, you didn't get money. Okay? You didn't collect anything because your receivable actually increased. And because since your uh, accounts receivable increased and you don't get money from it, that's quite... Uh, not a good thing for the company in terms of cash flow. So since we are not yet receiving this and your account receivable will actually increase, then this is a deduction later. Okay? You can consider it an, as a cash outflow. Not really a cash outflow, but in a sense that the company didn't receive 250000 cash and it was only an increase in receivable, you don't get cash from it, it's quite a negative thing. It affected your cash flow negatively. So you have to deduct it. Okay, next. For inventory, it decreased by 120,000. So you have a decrease in inventory, which means that, congratulations, your inventory decreased. That means you sold something and you might get something good from this, right? Okay, so you have to add it. How about your prepaid expenses? It decreased by 70,000. Okay, so let's say, for example, this prepaid expense is an insurance. 
instead of paying your insurance directly, debiting insurance expense, credit cash, and uh, this is actually an expiration of your asset, which is prepaid expenses, instead of debiting insurance expense and crediting cash from it, you don't actually directly pay cash for this one. This is a mere expiration of your prepaid expenses. So the company actually didn't, uh, didn't do any cash outlay on that expiration of that prepaid expense. So what you have to do is also, it's a positive thing for the company actually, because the expiration of that prepaid expense did not uh, did, not, uh, did not affect any cash or did not affect into any cash outflow but instead it is a mere expiration of your prepaid expense so what you have to do here it's a positive thing for the company you have to add it as well okay next your accounts payable actually increased by 100,000 we are now talking about current liabilities now so accounts payable increased by 100,000 you are not yet paying this 100,000 because accounts payable increase. You're not yet paying this 100,000. So what you have to do is to add this because you are not yet paying 100,000. There is no cash outflow yet because your payable increased. Okay? And then lastly, accrued expenses decreased by 40,000. So since uh, any accruals, basically these accruals already decreased, so this might mean also that the company has already paid. So for example, these accruals are salaries, okay? So any accrued salaries that you have represented, for example, by salaries payable, okay? So you debit salaries payable, and then you actually credit cash when you pay it, right? And since it's already decreased, you settled it to anyone <laughs> uh, you owe to. So you have already settled this. This is a considered a cash outflow, and you deduct this one. Okay, so let's now transform it and put it in the statement of cash flows. Okay, so increase in accounts receivable, we deduct to 50,000. Okay, and then decrease in inventory. We add 120,000 and then decrease in prepaid expenses. We add 70,000 and then increase in accounts payable. We add 100,000. And your decrease in accrued expenses, we deduct 40000 Okay? Let's do the math, and this is now your net cash flow from operating activities. Minus 250 plus 120 plus 70 plus 100 minus 40. So that is also 2,150,000 incidentally. Okay? Our problem is just like that. Okay? Let's now go to your investing and financing activities. So as you notice, operating activities actually relate to your net income to non-cash expenses, and your working capital, which is represented by your current assets and current liabilities. Now, let's now go to your investing activities. In investing activities, that usually is in the non-current asset section of the statement of financial position. So, when you analyze those items, you can reconstruct your investing activities. Okay, so what happened in your investing activities? Again, I told you earlier, you go to your non-current asset section of the statement of financial position. Okay, 
Now, in your details or in the details of your transactions, New Zines purchase two additional property plan and equipment, one for each class. So one for each class, so you can notice an increase in the amount of machinery and automobile. So for your machinery, we have from 2,750,000, it increased to 3,310,000, which is 560,000. Okay, so we put here purchase of machinery. which is 560,000. However, you purchase a machinery, you purchased, which means that you paid money. Even though you got a machinery, you paid money for it. That's where students get a little bit confused. They actually add this amount here. That's wrong. You actually paid money for it. And because you paid money for it, that is a cash outflow. So you have to deduct it. 560,000. Not because you got a machinery, that's a positive thing, so you have to add it. No, you actually paid money to get that machinery, and your perspective is cash outflow. You have to deduct it in your cash flow because that is represented as a cash outflow. Okay? The same thing we do with your automobile. So for your automobile from 380,000 going up to 780,000, you bought automobile worth 400,000. Okay. There's nothing in the problem that tells you that they sold something. So you don't get any proceeds from sale of fixed assets. Should there be one, then you have to also reconstruct your Let's say, for example, machinery beginning plus purchases during the year minus sales equals machinery ending. Okay? Basically, um, how it affects your machinery account. Any beginning balance and then any purchases and any uh, sale of your fixed assets will end up to your ending balance of machinery. But since we don't have anything like that in a problem and the problem only tells you a purchase, then that sums up our net cash flow from investing activities. So getting the total here, this is now your net cash flow investing. Which is negative 960,000. And the last part of the statement is your financing activities. In your financing activities, you look at the non-current liabilities portion of the Statement of Financial Position and your equity components in the Statement of Financial Position. So the first one is, the entity issued ordinary shares for cash, no premium was recorded. Should there be premium that is also part of the total proceeds, so that is also included in your cash inflow? But since the problem tells you that there is no premium recorded, so the total proceeds is basically the par or stated value of your common stock or your ordinary share capital. So the increase in your ordinary share capital is also equal to the proceeds that they got because there is no premium recorded. Again, should there be a premium recorded, then you should have to record that premium as well as part of the proceeds from your issuance of ordinary shares. But since there's no premium recorded, the increase in ordinary share capital also represents your cash proceeds from the issuance of those shares. Okay, you, I, I hope you got it. Okay, so let's start. So from 2,935,000, it increased to 3,235,000 and that is 300,000. Okay, so... Issue ones of ordinary share capital. That is a positive thing. That's an inflow for the company. There is a proceeds for that. Okay, because you issued shares, you got money from it from your issuance of shares. That is positive three hundred thousand. Again, where 
did this 300,000 come from? That is from 2,935,000 going up to 3,235,000 at an increase of 300,000. Okay, next. New jeans borrowed cash to finance their planned future expansion. And then if you look actually in the statement, there is a borrowing of from 0 to 1 million. So you know that they borrowed money worth 1 million. Okay? So we put here, <laughs> so we put here is your borrowing. Okay. You borrowed money, you got money. That's a cash inflow. So you add 1 million. And lastly, don't forget that the cash dividends that was distributed to the shareholders is 350000 It was distributed. So that's a cash outflow. Okay, so dividends distributed. Which amounts to 350000 That's an outflow because you gave it to them. Okay, so... Let's do the math. So three hundred thousand plus one million minus three fifty thousand that is nine hundred fifty thousand. Okay, let's now get your net cash flow. How do you get your net cash flow? The net effect of your operating, investing, and financing. Okay, so starting with 2,150,000 minus 960,000 plus 950,000. Net cash flow is 2,140,000. Okay, then let's get your cash by January 1, 2023, or December 31, 2022. So, cash. December 31, 2022. Given to you is 1,360,000. Okay? Doing the math again. Cash. At the end of the period. December 31, 2023. So, 2,140,000 plus 1,360,000 is 3,500,000. Okay? Then, how do you know if you did it correctly? Look at the cash balance at December 31, 2023. And it tells you 3,500,000. And your cash at December 31, 2023 is 3,500,000. Okay, so that's it. <laughs> you can take a screenshot first. Okay, now just a reminder, we have a uh, ongoing discussion on a new IFRS which will supersede your uh, IAS1 presentation of financial statements. So actually in there, your income statement format will change a bit. And we'll also follow a, a categorization of operating activities, financing activities, and uh, investing activities, or operating, investing, financing, OIF. And the statement of cash flows will also be a little bit affected by that, with the starting point in net income. So basically, the operating profit and loss will be the one that will be directed here in the net income part that we are using in the operating activities and statement of cash flows. And let's talk about that later when that IFRS is already in effect. But for now, we use this format. For the meantime, <laughs> thank you for being with us today. Thank you and have a great day.